Good morning, everyone. It's always what you're supposed to do. Place your cross on first. If you're a follower of Christ, you got a mission every day you get up. It might be simple. It might not be nothing major. The major things may come later. But I'm going to get to that later, too. Put your cross on. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for waking me up this morning. I thank you for giving me another chance to get it right. Another chance to operate in the supernatural. Lord Jesus, I thank you for everything that you do. I can't thank you enough for all that you do for me and all you do for all your children that call on you and even the children that don't. Lord Jesus, the, the children that are trying to find you and seek you. Lord Jesus, the ones that you're trying to constantly reach, the one out of the 99, thank you for all your children, Lord Jesus, because we all serve a purpose. We may not realize what that purpose is, Lord Jesus, but we have a purpose behind our lives that consists of you being the head of it. Lord Jesus, I ask you to use me as you seem fit. Touch me in a special way this morning. Guide my words, guide my voice. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today I woke up this morning. Normally I like to read a lot. I feel if I don't read a lot, I don't get the message. But this morning, he didn't have me read much. I turned to Psalm 110. And I read Psalms 110. And people may not know exactly what this psalm is, but I'm sure you have heard it a thousand times. The Lord said to my Lord, sit down at my right hand until I make thine enemies your footstool. Really think about that. It's the one of the, the rest of the verses are talking about God bringing down kings for his sake, for David's sake. You understand? But he asked the whole verse, the first verse said one key element to take heed to. What do you do when you sit down? What do you do when you sit down? Normally when you sit down and say you're at work. You've been working hard and it's 11 o'clock, 11.30, 12 o'clock and you sit down and you take a break, you relax, you eat your food, you drink your drink and you do nothing but sit down. You see, that's what God's telling you to do right now. That's what God's telling me. Sit down. Everything is in my control right now. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about that. He says, sit down at my right hand until I make thine enemies your footstool. You can't get no more self-explanatory than that. You know, in this life, we as people, we've been raised up by that I got to go up and go out and get it. That get it mentality. You understand? I got to get myself out the hole. I got to deliver myself. You understand? I got to take care of my family. I, I, I. A lot of people don't understand faith without works is there. Sometimes faith without works is, what's your works when God tell you to sit down? That's work. Obedience, trusting in God is part of your works. Doing what he asked you to do is part of your works. Sometimes he may have you go out. But sometimes he's going to have you sit down. You see, we try to move and move and move and do things our way. We don't give God the room to do what he set out to do. He said, sit down at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. So we started reading further on in Psalms 110. He's talking about bringing down kings. You understand? Only way God will bring down kings or bring down anyone is if they're going contrary or against God. Think about it now. Yesterday I was talking about government. How you're supposed to abide by the laws of the land and you're supposed to be subject to those that are over you. But those that are over you are who? Subject to who? God. You understand? They're subject to God. You don't have to do anything. You don't even have to say anything. If God sees that some things in your life are not going the right way or people are coming against you, all you got to do is sit back and, and relax. You don't. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. 
vengeance belongs to the Lord. But with these, this one verse, I can spread so much off of that one verse. Sit back, relax, enjoy yourself. Let God do what he do in your life. Let him do what he wants to do for you. A lot of times God is not doing what he wants to do for you because you are trying to do. You are trying to do. You are trying to take matters in your own hands. You trying to deliver yourself. Well, God's like, okay, if you want to deliver yourself, I'm going to let you keep trying. But eventually you're going to get tired. You're going to have to sit back and wait. Now this morning, me and my wife, we listened to Kevin Furtick. He's a younger preacher, about the same age as me, about 39, 40 years old. He's a pretty good preacher. I put my hats off to him. He's pretty good. He's pretty good at preaching that word. You understand? But I do have a few things that bother me about him. But in all sincerity, he does the right thing. But he was talking about Samson today. You know, there's a few things he said about Samson that I didn't quite agree with, but I got the message. You understand? I got the message. You see, Samson operated off his heart. He did. You understand? He operated off of how he felt or what he wanted. And Samson had a a crazy story, a, a story of this and that. You understand? Want to do things his way. But you got to understand something about him. In order for God to truly work on Samson, he had to sit him down. And what did he sit Samson down? How did he sit Samson down? How did he allow the strong man to be bound? You understand? He, he allowed the enemies to take out his eyes so he could see. He had no choice but to sit down. He allowed the, the enemy to cut off his heart, hair so he could have no strength. So he can really get his strength back from who? The Lord. So towards the end of his story, when he was blind, when he felt he had no strength left, and he couldn't guide himself, God guided him. You see, the, the enemy wanted to make a fool of Samson. They wanted to make sport of Samson. They wanted to bring him out for their amusement, entertainment. And they brought Samson out to the pillars. First mistake the enemy made, but God knew it. One thing you got, one thing he left out of Samson's story was that God set Samson up to do the things he did the way that he did it. You understand? Read from the beginning of Samson. He said his parents didn't know that God set this up for accusation against the Philistines. He set it up. God set up all Samson's journeys, all Samson's troubles. He knew what type of man Samson was. He knew what Samson was going to do. And he knew the way to get Samson to do things. All things work together for those who believe, right? But let me get back to the story. So when Samson couldn't see, and Samson felt he had no strength, while he was sitting in that prison blind, his hair started growing back. His strength started returning to him. He got stronger. Sit down at my right hand. Till I make your enemies your footstool. You see, Samson was the type with great strength becomes great responsibility, right? Think about it. You're a strong man. You know you're strong. You know too many people can't touch you. You know God has blessed you with this strength, this supernatural ability. So you take matters in your own hands all the time. And we fall victim to that same Samson attribute. We all do. We know God has empowered us, so... We take action. But God was like, okay, you took enough action, Samson. A lot of people think about his eyes getting cut off as punishment. Maybe that was his rest for the final battle. But let's see what happens. So they pull Samson out. They pull Samson out. They set him between a pillar. And Samson didn't have no eyes. So he asked the young boy, hey, guide me up here. See how God started working. God started being his eyes, guide me between the two pillars. And he called out to God and asked him for one last thing. Let him destroy his enemies. But it wasn't Samson that destroyed him. Samson's strength came from the Lord. He called on God. He finished stepping to his supernatural purpose to bring the house 
down the house, the temple of the Philistines and their God to the ground. He had to slow Samson down in order to get him exactly what he wanted him. He had to lead him. Because one of Samson's biggest weakness was the lust of the eyes. And what's one of our biggest weaknesses in this world? The lust of the eyes. We see a lot of things. We want this. We want that. We want to do this. You see, think about when you watch television. And you see that commercial about that new food that just came out. That new hamburger. And you want it. You weren't even thinking about a hamburger until you saw the commercial. Oh, I want to try that. It's got bacon on it. Let me go out and get that. You got bacon and ground beef in the house. You see, the world has its way of wanting you to want things that God's like, hey, you got all you need. Sit back, relax, while I work on your behalf. Now, when God wants you to step out, he's going to step you out. Samson's story is a prime example of a man that most people consider a failure. But I don't look at his story the same way. If you can't see yourself in Samson's story, you're missing something. I'm going to tell you why. Because there's no perfect man in this world. Everybody that look at Samson's story be like, well, if I was there, if I, I would do this, I would do that. Just imagine being the strongest man to ever walk this earth. And God has endowed you with strength, superhuman strength. You understand? Just imagine the things you would go through your life being stronger than the average man. Being strong as 10 men. Being more strong as 20 men. Imagine what that would do to your mindset. God had to slow him down, but people forget about Samson judged Israel for 20 years. People forget about that part. 20 years is a long time to judge or people. Some presidents can't do it four years. He had his flaws, he had his weakness, but he judged the people for 20 years. And during that 20 years, the children of Israel were doing pretty well. You understand? But he had to slow them down. You see, think about it. He sat Samson down for 20 years, let him enjoy his life for 20 years, and judged the people for 20 years. Sit down at my right hand. Till I make thine enemies thine footstool. When he called Samson back out, it was to fulfill his purpose. You understand? He had to sit for a while. He had to relax for a while. He had to be still for a while in order to get to his purpose. You see, what what my people are gonna think? Oh well, he should have did that 20 years ago. Hmm. Think about it, people. Nobody know what God has from, from start to finish. You see, what upsets me about a lot of people and a lot of Christians thinking they know what's best or misrepresenting a story. A lot of people misrepresent Samson's story. They leave the key element out, the very first part, when God said this was his purpose. Before the story began, God said, Samson's purpose is for this. So everything Samson went through was according to God's will and purpose. Don't write if he did it because of this way. Don't write if he did it because of that way. It was according to his purpose. Like Moses. He had to take Moses in the wilderness for a while. Moses committed a murder. He had to sit him down for a few years. Let him get some seeds in him. Let him spread a few seeds. Let him have some children. Let him sit in the wilderness for about a few years. You understand? Until he called him to do exactly what he wants him to do. You see, sometimes waiting and sitting back and relaxing is your rest while God sets up things for you to do. You see, Moses rested in the wilderness for a long time before he came back to Egypt. You understand? He was an older man when he came back to Egypt. You understand? You got to look at things. Sometimes rest is exactly what you need. You understand? Sometimes it is what it is. You know, most people don't consider God, Jesus, 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness as a rest period. But it was before he had to start the mission. 
He grew spiritually in the wilderness. He grew stronger in the wilderness. Nobody don't talk or talk about that aspect. Satan tested him. Satan tempted him. And then when he came back, he was ready to start the mission. Consider this time in your life as a time of rest because when things start moving fast in your life, just know that you're ready. But right now, God wants you to be still and know who he is. Let him set up the things. Let him bring down the people that are coming against you. Let him rise up the people that's going to help you reach your destination to reach your purpose in life. You understand? Nobody knows your purpose. Just like nobody knows Samson's purpose. But the thing is, if you read that Bible accurately and you study it, you will see where God's hand has been in all these stories. Let's take David, for example. You know, David rebelled against God. And God told him what was going to happen. Not rebelled against God. He, diso he did something disrespectful. He committed murder. He committed adultery. And then he lied about it. He, he broke like three of the commandments in one. More than one. He coveted somebody, his neighbor's wife. He committed murder. Then he tried to cover it up with lies. He, he broke three commandments. It's just the three that I'm thinking of off the top of my dome. You understand? And God told him, hey, because of this evil that you've done, there will always be strife within your home. There will always be strife within your home. You got to really be careful about what you do. Sometimes God wants you to sit down so you won't bring any evil upon your own house. You understand? And sometimes sitting down too long and being idle, you'll make a mistake like David did. You understand? God had to put David back in his place too. You understand? And David had to fight against his sons and do all these type things. Because of disobedience. You understand? Sometimes an idle man, a mind is the devil's playground. Sometimes sitting around not doing anything can hurt you. That's why God say put your that's why God has pushed me to issue to put your cross on first. Stay prayed up, stay doing this. But sometimes God does want you to sit back and relax and wait on him. Let him do what he wants to do in your life. Right now, people are in panic mode. I saw people. A video about people trying to run out and get their stimulus check and the tax preparation people then changed all their account information. So they all surrounded around a tax place trying to barricade them, barge themselves in. Just think about this, people. Before the government was talking about stimulating the economy by giving people money, where did your trust come from? Was your trust in a $1,200 check? Was your trust and your unemployment, you understand, being $600 a week, or what's your trust in God? Be still and know who He is. Be still right now. Let God do what He does. You understand? He wants to do some things for you. He wants to do some things in your life. But right now, all He wants you to do is sit back, relax, eat, drink, be merry while God works behind the scenes. You understand? God has a plan. You know, you got to read Psalms all the way through to truly understand the things that David went through. Sometimes God told David to sit down. Sometimes God told people, David to rise. But like I said, listening to God and trusting in Him, if you seek Him a lot, He'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Right now, he's telling you, wait on me. Let me do what I do. Stop taking matters in your own hands. Stop trying to do this. Stop trying to do that. Stop worrying about what your enemy's doing. Stop worrying about anything. Don't worry. The Bible says you can't add one cubit to your stature by worrying. You can't add one cubit to your stature by worrying about the kings of the earth are doing. You can't add one cubit to your stature by worrying about what's going on in somebody else's house. Focus on God's kingdom. And God's kingdom right now is telling you to focus on doing nothing. 
just for now, take this message. This for somebody. Maybe it's for me. Who knows? You understand? I just want to step into obedience and do what God wants me to do. You understand? That's what it's all about. If you trust in God and you tr uh, trust in Him to direct your path on the daily, your missions change. You have to realize that your missions change. Sometimes He wants you to go out. Sometimes He wants you to sit down. Sometimes He wants you to go left. Sometimes He wants you to go right. You can't get into a mode when you're just doing the same old thing over and over again, deja vu. Because God, missions change. You got to look at Moses in the wilderness with the children of Israel. You understand? It was never the same thing over and over again. You understand? He fed him with manna and quail for a little while. You understand? Then the mission changed. He had he was protecting them. He was feeding them in the wilderness. Then he was like, okay, it's time for y'all to learn how to be a nation again. Now I got to have y'all get ready for war. I got to get y'all ready to know how to fight against your enemies and how to do these things. The mission changes constantly. Sometimes you got to fight with the sword. Sometimes you just got to march around Jericho and start for the, wall, the walls to fall down. It's all about trusting in God. That's why I tell everybody all the time, I don't know God's purpose for your life. I don't know what God wants you to do. But if you're listening to the sound of my voice, I'm sure he wants you to be still right now. Stop trying to do everything. Stop trying to take matters in your own hands. Trust in God right now. God has a perfect mission for you. You know, I'm going to talk about myself for a second. God knows my heart. He knows my desire to make music for Him. He knows my desire to be in the studio. My desire to hear people playing the music that God has led me to create. Besides this worldly music, God knows my heart in this. But can I rush God? Can I make him give me a studio or put me in the studio today? Can I do any of those things? All I can do is wait. You see, I have a certain amount of funds that I know I'm going to have every day. What can I do? Can I go out and bump? You know, I can live by the world standing and say, I'm a, I'm a hustler. I'm going to go out and make this happen. And when I go out and make it happen, all I'm going to do is mess things up. You got to go with God's flow. You know, I've been doing this. I've been making music for years. And the thing is, I'm sure it's a few things that God wants me to do away with within my heart, within my body, within my soul, before he stepped me to the next echelon of my purpose. And the same way with you. You understand? I'm not perfect. I never claim to be perfect. I never claim to be something I'm not. That's why when I read that Bible, I can look at Samson's story and see his struggles. I can look at David's story and see his struggles. I can look at Abraham's story and see his struggles. I can look at Noah's story and see his struggles. I can look at your story and see your struggles. And know that God has a purpose for you and that your life is in God's hands. I can't look at you and compare you to me. I can't look at Paul and compare him to me. I can't look at nobody in that word and be like, well, I would do things this way. Because I don't know what God has for you. All I know is God has for you to honor his word. And trust in him and be obedient to him. Because you have a purpose. Your purpose may not be the same as my purpose. I can't tell you God wants you to get on here and talk about him like I do. But I'm sure God has a mission for you personally. Just like he had a mission for Samson personally. Just like he had a mission for Elijah personally just like he had a mission for Samuel purposeful John I could keep going no two stories in the Bible are exactly alike God didn't make no man or no woman exactly alike I don't know what you struggle with on a daily I don't know why you do the things you do just like you don't know why what I struggle with on a daily you don't know why I do the things I do but God knows and God knows what he wants for you Nobody, let no man tell you what you should be doing. Let the word and let God tell you. All I can do is lead you to the king. All I can do is lead you to the kingdom. All I can do is spread heavenly things to you. And it's up to you to take it in and soak it in and let God direct your path. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It's not up to me to work out your salvation. 
It's not up for you to work out my salvation. It's not up to you to tell your brothers or your sister what they should be doing if it's not in line with this word. You understand? It's not. You understand? Judge not. Let me explain this thing right quick. You see, puffed up with pride, I've been there. I've done that. And sometimes I still fall victim to it. And sometimes it's not a man alive that don't fall victim or a woman alive that don't fall victim to pride. But don't let that pride get you to a judgmental state when you think you know best for somebody else. Because you don't. You know, us as parents, we try to direct our kids' path early. I wouldn't do this because this is what I've been through in my life. I, I did this. I've been married since I was 18. That's what God wants you to do. Really? You know, I got brothers and sisters in this world. I got sisters. A lot of my sisters had kids at 14 before they were married. Does that make them wrong? No. That baby came to my nep nieces and nephew came into this world. It's not up to me to realize what they supposed to have done. I was happy to have a new niece. I was happy to have a new nephew. I can't judge them. You see, I don't know why I'm getting at this today. But that's what's wrong with people. That's what's wrong with church folks. They think they know everything. Sometimes we think we know everything and we don't know nothing. All we need to do is lead people to God and let God direct them. You understand? We love to say things that are over our head. What can you stop? One thing you have to realize as a parent, once your kids get older, you can't be with them every day. You can't direct their path every day. Only God can. Only God can tell them to be still. You can tell them to be careful. But you can't tell them what to do. You understand? You can't. Saying if you're a preacher in a congregation, you can't tell your congregation what to do. All you can do is tell them what the word says. You understand? I tell this story all the time. 